is the fight of the financial chess boxers. You'll see what I mean. Because the first chess boxer in the ring, who comes all the way from Bulgaria, it's a nice place, I've been on my only way up there. He, <laughs> he actually specifically comes from a town which is technically the poorest economic region in Europe. However, for his day job, he works in algorithmic trading. It's so exciting. I'm, I'm so excited by this. Uh, and his specialism is a cheeky wink. I know, it's fantastic. So, in the white corner, weighing in at 86 kilograms, standing at 192 centimeters, with a chest hello of 1400, make some noise for Jordan Bulgarian Beast Jordano! Keep those cheers coming! Come on! <laughs> yes! Your white corner fighter! Give the crowd a cheeky wink! Yes, that is a cheeky wink. I can confirm! <laughs> All right, so joining the Bulgarian beast in the ring. We have a fighter who is proudly representing the North. He actually comes from Blackburn. Any Northerners in? Oh, you're a bit quiet. Any Northerners in? All right, that's what I expect. <laughs> uh, so for anyone who's from London here in, in the Dome in Tufnell Park, um, North is north of Islington on the map. All right. <laughs> yeah. So our next fighter's hobbies include ferret rearing, pigeon fancying, and drinking warm beer. He sounds like a riot. <laughs> Let's welcome him. So in the black corner, weighing 105 kilograms, standing at 188 centimeters with a chest hello of 2267. Give it up for David, Northern Powerhouse, Germany! Hammer and the cheeky wink. I'm excited about this bout. Give it up one more time for our fighters, the Bulgarian Beast and the Northern Powerhouse. And I'll hand back to our country team. The thing is, Chris, David Jarmany is a flipping good chess player, isn't he? Two heavyweights in the boxing sense, but you heard there the mention of his ELO rating of over 2,000. 200 that makes him a very strong chess player and and for those of you who've been playing on chess.com in, in lockdown this this won't be his chess.com rating this is probably the equivalent of 24 2500 and the berserker is in oh the berserker's, the berserker's here yes, yes, yes. get ready to clap Lovely stuff. So round one, 
Bjorken, a late replacement. So you'll see the name Lars Bjorkness at the bottom with the white pieces. La Lars, unfortunately, had to withdraw at the last moment. Jordan, though, a more than able opponent for David, we're hoping here. Yep, so white is in fact Jordan Jordanov, pride of Bulgaria, playing with the white pieces against David Germany, a very, very strong chess player, not a bad boxer either. This could be a tough, tough fight for Jordan. It's about to kick off. I know you're all excited. Referee Carlon's about to start the clock. And we're off! Oh, and it's D4 again. What a surprise by Jordan. Which is known as the Queen's Gambit. David Germany once again responding with D5. And, uh, you know, Jordan, no respect for the North, is playing the London system. This is a very trendy opening. Jordan clearly knows his stuff if he's wheeling this set about. He's confident. He's moving quickly. I think we've got a game on our hands here, Matt. We do indeed. Uh, Jordan going for the classic London system setup. Super, super solid, which I, I actually really like in this context against a stronger opponent. Normally, when you play a stronger player, you want the position to be as tactical and messy as possible because that increases the chance of them messing up. But this ain't no ordinary chess game. There's boxing involved famously and as a consequence being really solid here is a great strategy if you think you can win at the boxing so remember again Jordan with the white piece is not Lars uh, but this is really he's playing this opening just as it should be it's a very classical setup as you were saying develops the pieces the the dark squared bishop is outside that little triangle of pawns the white squared bishop shelters behind it on a very good diagonal there this is good stuff from Jordan with the white pieces. This is very, very solid stuff from White. Like it a lot. David going for the C5 pawn break. He wants to change the nature of his position. Oh, and he's taken it! He's taken the pawn! So, knight takes pawn is the natural response, and then he'll be attacking the bishop. He does capture back. He captures back, and White, White, if he's not careful, could lose that bishop on d3, Chris Levy. He needs to either drop it back on either of those diagonals, maybe one square, or move. Okay, there you go, he's just tucked it away, kept it safe. David responds by casting, getting his king safe. That's an interesting move. What do you think of that, Matt? So Queen Queen B1 keeping control, or increasing control over the E4 square, potentially following up with a uh, an attack on the Queen side with his A and B pawns. The problem he has here is he can't play B4 that easily without weakening the C3 square. And the C3 square is further weakened by the fact, effectively, that that rook next to the Queen is trapped in the corner. So Queen B1 is a cute move, but I'm not 100% certain about it. Now, Knight F to D7, David is gonna play pawn to E5. But first, but first he needs to move his bishop back or take the knight and he's taken the knight! An exchange. And he's fallen up with E5 instantly. Lovely stuff by, uh, by the Northerner. That's, uh, that's really, really quality chess right there. So it's a bit like what we saw in the last round with getting those two pawns next to each other. So if you remember the tax man, had that set up there where he just grabbed the center with his pawns and then slowly pushed the opponent back. Is there a danger that this could be happening slowly to Jordan too? Well, I think before we do that, in honor of this wonderfully positionally played game, does anyone fancy a chant of chess? 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 is playing very, very aggressively, and Jordan, Jordan is having to lash out with this move, B4, knight to E4 is a really, really nice move. Now, normally, you don't want double pawns, but those pawns are so strong that actually doubling them and moving them closer to the center of the board threatens to suffocate the white position, and I think, I think white is a bit worse here. 
That was, that was some very exciting, aggressive chess. White start off row. Um, I'm a devotee of the London system myself, and I, I really enjoy seeing that setup wheeled out. And he's playing all the right moves there. Perhaps, I mean, it's not a huge blunder or anything, but when he took the C pawn with his D pawn, giving up the center, that, that's really against the spirit of it. And David has responded by hurling his pawns forward. Uh, the D and the E pawn grabbing that stake in the center. And then with the F pawn really cementing his aggressive intentions before the next chess round. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I think the problem that, that Jordan has here is that um, he's, he's got too many weaknesses already. He had that really, really solid start. But that bishop on G3 uh, will be taken by the knight if he doesn't do anything, which would leave him with horrible pawns on E3, double pawns on the G file and that C3 pawn. He's also threatening knight takes C3, meaning that white more or less has to take that night giving up his light squared bishop and David will capture back with the F pawn and actually that's those pawns could be a huge asset the one thing that Jordan does have going for him in that position is that it does start to get a little bit messy now I would prefer to have black here but I think the position is messy enough particularly with boxing in the equation that there should be a lot of interesting play left yep yeah, so advantage David the powerhouse there's still a lot to come on the chest but now well, I think we're ready to go have a look at the boxing and see how these two match up. Jordan, I've not seen before, but certainly physically looks a match for David. These are, these are two true prime heavyweights in the sense of the word. A lot of beef in the ring there. Let's let's uh, see who lands the, beef, the heavier punches. Beef, beef alert. <laughs> beef alert, indeed. Referee Ronaldo issuing his last instructions. Let's have a look who establishes the early dominance. Jordan suddenly looks up for it. And a nice little tap at the start of the first round. Both looking, Jordan there with a nice doubling up of the jab. Yeah, Jordan landing the jab early. David looking to pump it out too. David certainly looks chiseled. He's been working hard out of his training camp uh, just around the corner in Archway at Islington Boxing Club. This is, this is typical of what you see with, with the bigger men. You often look to establish the classical, the jab straight straight away to look at uh, who has the dominance. And that is a very well-educated jab from Jordan, followed up with the right hand to the body. I, what I would posit here, it's a slightly cagier start than what we've seen because all of the other fights have been so aggressive from the off. But there's still a few, a few punches being landed without one side necessarily getting the upper hand yet. David just uh, narrowly missing with a straight right there. And I think the difference when you get to the, like the heavier weights like this is they're both aware of the power that, they, that each other brings. So there, when, when a power punch with the right hand lands, then it could be serious trouble. And a, a, a brief pause here. Uh, Rafi Ronaldo is having a word with David as, as the gum shield comes out. We're halfway through the round almost, uh, close to one and a half minutes on the clock. I certainly think Jordan's had slightly the better of it. Um, just a bit more aggressive and landing the jab more often, but it's, it's again, good back and forth. The cut and thrust uh, of top level boxing. And I think, I think uh, with Jordan having slightly the better, it will make for a more entertaining spectacle because David has slightly the better of it in the chess. So, um, thoughts so far, I mean, how, how is David getting on? Like, will, will he have realistic ambitions of winning the boxing off the back of this performance so far? I mean, it's definitely going to be Jordan's round for teams as it is. And just when we were talking there, Jordan landed a, a nice uh, sort of a, a jab and then a kind of jab, jab check hook with the left so david certainly taking a few punches even there's nothing that's looked like rocking him it's a it's a clear round for jordan on the points there at the moment hey, Ooh, looking for the uppercut there. as well there. that was quite close so now jordan's having established the the dominance with the jab is looking to build off the back of that with the power punches in there as well david has to be wary of this i think um oh a, a little punch after the break there and the, the gum shield comes out again for David. As the clock ticks down, 25 seconds left in this round. This may be the last of the action we see before back to the chess mat. Will both sides be happy to leave that round to have, you know, suss each other out a little bit without necessarily landing any heavy punches? Do you think they'll be happy with that? I think Jordan will be happy to know he's established some early dominance. 
David will know what he is dealing with in the ring. Oh, did land a big ride just on the gong there. But I think David now knows that he probably needs to be looking to speed things up a little bit on the chess. Um, because Jordan is packing some heat in there. And I do wonder if there might be some trouble if it goes deep in the boxing. Uh, a little bit of controversy here as to, as to the bell. Uh, referee Ronaldo asking for it to be bashed a little bit harder there, but that was that's the end of the round. A round that was very good for late replacement Jordan Yordanov. How would you be playing this now as David going back to the chess? As, as David, I'd be wanting to two, do two things. One, try to take advantage of existing pawn weaknesses and, and create some more. Um, the other thing I, I would look to do is undertake a pawn break that's going to damage black's position white's position further and try to open up the king or to increase some kind of my control with my pieces so i think bishop takes e4 is is maybe forced here because the threat of knight takes g3 is quite strong and, and knight, knight takes, takes c3, c3 is very yeah. strong as well so if you play bishop takes e4 you either take back with the d pawn which then gives you this nice f4 pawn break or you take back with the f pawn and then you've got this half open, open file for your rook I and actually, Chris, I think take it with the D pawn, given that you're threatening F4 next move, might be the way to go. I, I've changed my mind since my initial assessment. I think Bishop takes D takes might be the right plan. Options. He has options which come from a very well played opening. Oh, and it's the Berserker back. in the room. With the classic thunderclap to herald the beginning of the next round. David Jarmy, the powers, getting in the spirit of things there. Back to the border. As, as you say, a very pleasant position for him. Good options. First of all, is Jordan going to see that he has to play Bishop takes knight? That's, that's the first thing to question to be answered because it's not always clear when you come back to the chess after a rambunctious round of pugilism like we've just witnessed. But, but maybe less rambunctious than some of the previous rounds. Both sides may have a little bit more of a clear head. I do think Bishop takes e4 is forced. Oh, hello. And we're back! So, can they hear us? Okay, so that knight on e4 is a really, really dangerous piece. He's, it's threatening to take the bishop on g3, creating horrible pawn weaknesses on e3 and g3 to go along with the pawn weakness on c3. So that's a, that's a useful uh, tool in Black's arsenal, if you will. Um, it's also threatening knight takes c3, winning a pawn and opening up the dark squares for his lovely bishop in front of the king. So I think white has to play bishop takes e4 but oh he's played he's played bishop h2 he hasn't. he's played bishop the knight takes c3 knight takes c3 and he's done it knight takes c3 that is a big move and queen to b3 straight away queen to b3 straight away and david instantly plays rook to c8 defending the knight so david has won a pawn he has an enormous pawn center which is going to potentially steamroll in the white position I think that White is in a bit of trouble here, Chris Levy. It certainly is an enormous pawn centre. I am marvelling at the size of it and the potential that it has, as you say, to steam forward and push Jordan off the way. He's, oh, he's, oh, he's, he's allowing a, a check. He's allowing a check. Knight e2 check is a possibility, but David, yeah. David calmly moving his king to h8 because he couldn't move his queen's pawn because that would have been check. But now, oh, he's blundered a rook. He's blundered an exchange. Rook c1, and now knight e2 check. Knight e2 check. It's a fork. It's a fork. The knight is hitting the king. The knight is hitting the rook. And because it's check, and you have to respond to check, he can't save the rook. He can't save the rook, and he's going to take it, and he has won a rook for a knight. It keeps getting worse and worse and worse. But there's still a lot of material left on the board, and as we saw, the boxing was quite back and forth. So I don't think Lars is in danger of losing immediately. We've got two minutes left in this round still. Lars is... It's doing the right thing here, which is just taking the time after losing some material, reassess the new circumstances, and see how can I best defend being a little bit material down. And although David still has a very strong position, that pawn center is attack, uh, it's intact, there's White. no immediate danger here, man. 
So uh, I think White needs to start creating some threats of his own. I like Knight G5 just vaguely. Oh, he's taken the pawn! So David has sacrificed the pawn in order to activate his queen and pin that bishop on C2, which now can't move. And he's threatening to trade queens. He's threatening to trade queens, which would be advantageous for black because when you're material up, swapping off pieces makes it easier to get to a winning ending. The other problem with queen takes queen is after the rook takes, the other rook will swing behind that rook and win the bishop on c2. So whatever white does, he shouldn't trade queens, and he hasn't! He's not trade queens. Very, very nice. He's also protecting the f4 square, which means the pawn uh, break f4 for black is now a little bit harder to execute. But David still has a phenomenally pleasant position. He can move his f8 rook to the d file, which he's just done, meaning that he can move the knight, attacking the queen, and just continue to squeeze, continue to pile the pressure on. And will we see Jordan crack under this northern pressure? <laughs> There's still just 25 seconds left, and I think Jordan has defended quite well after that early blunder. He's clearly got the worst position, less material, but he's going to see this round out, and again, very smartly taking his time, making sure he doesn't compound it. Yep, that's a, that's a canny move. He just tucks the queen away out of danger, out of the sight of that rook that was eyeing it up. I like that, and the bell's about to go. Ah, nuts the bell. David threatening to swap off queens again. A round that has swung heavily in favour of David Jarmany. A lot rests on this next round of boxing. Um, I mean, absolutely. It's it's definitely a, a better position for for David. But you have to take a hat off to Jordan stepping in at the last minute here. Um, didn't know that he was taking this fight. Uh, didn't know who his opponent was, who he could uh, prepare for. So I think. He's acquitted himself very well on both the boxing and the chess to still be in this as he move into the second round of boxing here, Matt. Yeah, ab absolutely, Chris. It, it, it's, it's such a thing to go from being uh, just a, an attendee at this event to actually stepping in and fighting without necessarily having geared yourself up on the mental side. Um, the, the key thing is we always um, make sure that everyone is safe and well and that we foster an atmosphere where um, you know, people are only doing, uh, doing this if they feel kind of they're in a position to do it. No one is under under undue pressure and I think that kind of just and fair atmosphere is integral to having a really fun night and for Jordan to basically say you know what I'm going to step in and I am going to kind of give it my best under the circumstances I, I hold I hold him, my hat out to him if that's a phrase it isn't but uh, yeah he's done a cracking job and he's, he's not playing badly at all just David's extra experience uh, coupled with that specific blunder allowing Knight take C3 has been game-changing, and I think he needs to have a big boxing round now. I, I really would not want to face David Jarmany, even having had weeks to prepare for him over the board. But we did see Jordan, I would say, not, if not dominating, certainly clearly taking the first boxing round. And I would expect to see him try and build on that with an aggressive approach here in the second round. And you can see he's on his toes, again looking to establish the jab and build on it with a powerful right hand that he very nearly landed there. David, though, not getting too flustered and landing a couple of counters on his own. This is high-quality heavyweight stuff here, Matt. Oh, And uh, again, the check hook landed and looking for the follow-up with the uppercut. Um, good to see a, a, a tap of gloves there. Mark of mutual respect as David was grappling the back of the head there of Jordan. These two clearly do have a lot of respect for each other. You love to see it. Oh, ab absolutely, Chris. Absolutely. Jordan is tackling this in the most perfect way possible. He's bringing the fight to David. I'm sure he knows that he won't win the chess. And in fact, he's in real danger if things go a bit south, that he loses next round. He has very little time on the clock. So he has one, maybe two boxing rounds left. And I think if he doesn't land a key punch here, either to discombobulate David or to bring it closer to a technical knockout, then he's in trouble. Again, he's good combinations we on here. Looking for the uppercut, landing a couple, and then following up with a left to the bottom as well. David's soaking it up well, though. But you can see he's starting to gasp for a little bit. And we're only halfway through this round. I think you're starting to build up a head of steam here. David needs to do something uh, 
will start firing back to persuade him because he's now starting to plow forward and land some punishing shots. If you're if you're David here, knowing how well the chess is going and knowing that you're on the back foot a bit in the boxing, what's your strategy? I might be looking to hold a little bit, maybe just to draw things down. But David is actually looking to fire back there a couple of big overhand rights there. And he landed a big shot on Jordan oh, as he came in. This is really starting to heat up now between these two big men. Two big men putting on a big display of boxing to match the chest that we saw earlier. Do you think, do you think another round of boxing could win it for Jordan? Would that be enough? It would certainly be on the cards, but David, I'm loving how he's firing back here. He could be looking to hold on, cover up, sear into the chest where he has advantage, but he's relishing this testing of one. I think he wants to prove himself in the ring as well. We know he's a quality chess player. He's been training so hard since his last item. I think he wants to show that so he can step up against his demanding opponent. The uppercut landed again for Jordan, but a good check left hook there from David as he moved the last 10 seconds. And Jordan loses a little bit of time at the end. I don't think it's going to be a killer bunch. I think we're about to have the bell. The gong is about to be rung. I could certainly, I'd certainly want to watch more of this. I hope we don't see things over in the next test round because I'm enjoying this quality exhibition of boxing now. I think we need another round of boxing. We absolutely need another round of boxing for this to be one of the classic chess boxing nation fights. And that is indeed the bell. Oh, and the two of them there giving each other the high five. You can tell they both are loving this as the crowd are here at the Boston Dome. And, wow, I mean, I, I think Jordan's going to be really happy with that. I guess the question will be, is it enough? And really, it comes down to his chess strategy here. It, 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 it's very, very tempting to... Uh, to swap off queens here, but actually the pressure on the C2 square would be so, oh, yeah. so great. Coupled with the fact that the king is horribly placed, the, the bishop and knight are out of the game. David can play very simple moves after that. Jordan has to find a way to keep queens on and somehow get a little bit of initiative. The problem is black doesn't have any weaknesses in the position. You can play a move like knight G5, but it's not really threatening anything. There's no pawn breaks here for, for white, and, and that is a real issue. The other thing that would concern me as well is the weakness of the back rank as well. So not just the fact that he could be potentially losing that rook, uh, even if he exchanges off queens, uh, the pain of the, the C2 uh, bishop on the rook, and then the, the king potentially hemmed in as well. I think it's going to be very hard for Jordan to get through this round. Again, the two of them showing a bit of respect there as the berserker is in. The crowd are really getting into this now, man. David uh, resting in the corner there. He looks completely shattered. But he's, he's fortunate that actually he doesn't have many complicated decisions to play on the board. He just needs to play in a way that is going to ma make the best use of the time available because ideally he would finish it this round. And although I think his position is pretty trivially winning, if I'm honest, given White's lack of play, I don't think he's got quite enough um, enough of a kind of crushing attack to force the win right now. Uh, so we really probably will see one more round of boxing. Really needs to slow it down. And, and we're back. And we're back. Oh, hello. Um, so, a little bit of a summary of the position. David, Northern Powerhouse Germany, with an absolutely crushing advantage here. It's, he's threatening to take that queen on E2. So, White has to do something. He either has to swap off queens or move his queen away. Unfortunately, swapping off queens, which would seem to reduce the pressure, would actually be a bit of a problem because after he plays queen takes queen, rook takes queen, the other rook will then move behind and then that will win the bishop on C2 and given oh he's played Queen E1 he's played Queen E1 I really really like this White has very very little going for his position but but this is a hybrid sport so what he can do is be as solid as he can just survive and take it to another round of boxing and you know knock his socks off I mean what a round of boxing that last one was man you're completely right here what Jordan needs to do 
Number one is slow it down. So he's already not got that much time on his clock. Three minutes compared to David's. We have just three minutes left in the round. If I'm Jordan, I would be taking a lot of time over each move. Just look to survive this very tricky position. And now, I'd love to see another round of boxing like that. I, I think we all deserve to see another round of boxing. Jordan with the edge there. David with a commanding lead here. It is exactly that kind of round, that traditional, someone is about to win in the chest, but oh God, that's the bell. I've got to survive a round of boxing. That's why we chuffing love this. Two and a half minutes left in the round. Jordan again has this two and a half minutes. David is keeping the pressure up by responding very quickly. Immediately saying, okay, you'll move again, solve this problem. Yeah, Jordan, Jordan doesn't have much of a plan here. He can't really break into Black's position, which has very few weaknesses. David, he moved his rook to the E-file, which, you know, it, it's reasonable enough given the fact that White doesn't really have a plan here. And he's now moving his knight into B6 with the aim of activating on D5. But, but Jordan, Jordan was threatening the queen, but he's moved the queen. So that threat is now no longer in play. David is not rushing here. I almost feel like he wants another round of boxing. You could see how much they were enjoying it. He's not necessarily trying to force this position, which is overwhelming. All his pieces you can see are cooperating very well. The, the dark squared bishop there fires towards the middle of the board. The queen dominates the two rooks. Then you contrast them with the white pieces. Tucked away on the back rank, not really attacking much. Oh, oh, oh no, he's lost the piece! He's lost a piece, queen takes queen, rook takes a rook takes bishop! Black has won a piece, He swapped off queens. Absolutely massive blunder. Jordan buckled under the pressure. He had basically no moves. He has this horrible bishop entombed on h2. He could barely make a good pawn move. And as so often happens in these positions, he's blundered. He's performed an absolute jaffer. And his job, which was already incredibly difficult, is now nearly impossible. But... But David doesn't have an immediate win, and with 45 seconds left, I think we're going to get another round of boxing. I think it's almost certain, and actually, yeah, yeah so he lost some more material, but the queens came off, and that takes a little bit of the sting out of the position. Of course David's going to win it, but he's going to have to come back to the chessboard again if he can survive the boxing, because there's now only 20 seconds left in this round. Lars's cock is ticking down, but he's going to see it out. So I think, I think the issue with Jordan's position now is that Black has a very good idea, which is to play Rook from D8, where the Queen used to be, to D3, attacking that Knight. And then when the Knight moves, you move, you move the same Rook one square forward so that you double the Rooks up on the second rank with the idea of taking the G-Pawn, taking the Bishop. And I think, I think Jordan's in trouble, but, but we do get that round of boxing. Bring on the boxing. Bring on the boxing. I think that actually worked out as well as it could have done for Jordan there. Yeah, he dropped some more material. Yes, technically it was a blunder. But he was in danger of getting squashed, you know. What David could have done there, maybe not the most positional approach, but just said, okay, I'm material up, my pieces are better positioned. I'm just gonna roll my pawns forward. Jimmy, open your position and just crush you. But in a way, the proper way of playing was actually the slightly slower way of playing, and it means it's going to be treated to another round of boxing. There's clearly no hope. Would you expect David to win uh, in the next round of chess if he came back to yes. it? Yes, uh, uh, he, he will 100% win for two reasons. One, he has a crushing position. Uh, and actually, I, I, meant, I mentioned the move um, Rook D3. Now looking again, Rook B2 is a lot stronger. I mean, it achieves the same thing, but doesn't allow uh, Rook B1 in response. So. Um, I, I think David will 100% win, A, because his position's crushing, and B, because actually Jordan only has 30 seconds left. And that, it, he's not going to be able to play a series of good moves in 30 seconds over the course of, of that round. Um, he'll lose on time or he'll lose on the board, so he needs a knockout in the boxing. Yeah. And, and that creates extraordinary pressure. With a position like that against an opponent like that, it's simply not possible. Again, huge credit to him for stepping in at the last moment. I've loved watching this clash um, over both the board and in the ring. Uh, and Jordan's going to make a huge effort here because I think he kn he's a good enough chess player to know the writing is on the wall. And he's also a, a keen enough strategist to know what that means he has to do in the boxing. 
David knows it as well. So here we go, off again. Jordan looking to work his way in, not rushing things, looking for the opportunity. Lands the jab a couple of times. But David looks fairly bouncy on his feet. It hasn't taken too much out of him yet. And he's, he's looking like he might well get through the round if he carries on like this to then deliver checkmate when we come back. A ah, good, good combination there from David. Jordan took it on the gloves, no damage, but he's giving him something to think about. This is smart. David's not just looking to survive, but to fire back a little bit. And that's, I think, the right thing to do in this scenario, where you know you're going to come under some heat at some point. Tells Jordan, for me, needs to attack more. I know that's a really basic thing to say, but it's so dire in the chest with two minutes left. I mean, is he is he waiting for that, the right opening to, to just kind of wait for David, put his guard down and then hit him where it hurts, as it were? I think the, uh, the last round took a lot out of both of them. You can see the pace has dropped a little bit. And you have to remember that Jordan hasn't been training for this. So, so David's had the last seven, eight weeks in training camp uh, working on the stamina. Often once you get past a couple of rounds in the boxing, you can kind of feel the stamina, like you're, you're depleting the tank a little bit. And I suspect that might be happening to Jordan. He'll know he's getting close to the end of this round, one and a half minutes to go now. I would expect the adrenaline to start surging. One last assault should be coming along. But for David again, still firing back. And that's a welcome pause. David will, David will be happy with that. Just over 70 seconds to go. Jordan's chances of winning this bout are ever decreasing. Ebbing away, it's really now or never. He has to find a second win, and he did indeed have a good right there, but he followed up. Uh, and the guys have David fires back with a power shot. Uh, Jordan landing the uppercut. David is in trouble here. Jordan is really looking to land the mark. Oh my goodness! He needs to hang on. Oh, he's so hang on, is, David. This is horrendous. Hang this on. is horrendous. 40 seconds left in the round. The what? Northern Powerhouse is still standing. Are we going to. What a, oh, a, war of a warning! A warning for turning his back, but the two of them tap. Down to 30 seconds. Jordan has to follow that up, but does he have anything in the tank, Matt? Does he have anything or. Or is he running on fumes? 15 seconds to go, 15 seconds to go. Jordan really needs to land that killer blow. Has his moment been and gone? Or can he find it again? Oh, he's landing again. David wisely hangs on. I, I think, think he's gonna it. see it through. What a brave, brave effort from Jordan Jordan up there. The algorithmic trader finding his rhythm in the boxing, finding some stamina where there appeared to be none. Stepping into the last minute there, really reaching deep, deep inside himself to mount one last assault on the Northern powerhouse, who I think has gonna earn his chest victory here. He's really been tested in the ring against a very strong opponent. Now let's look uh, how will he force checkmate here? How is this going to unfold, man? You're a good player. You're about the level of David Germany. Ha get in, talk us into his mindset here. How is he going to finish his man off and avoid one more punishing round so of boxing? I, I, I think the critical issue we have here is that David is not only uh, phenomenally ahead on the board, but he's also phenomenally ahead on time. Jordan has 30 seconds left, and I think this is a dignity-saving exercise. It's about going down fighting, playing as quickly as possible, and hoping against hope that David blunders a rook or similar. But even that is probably not enough because he's a whole rook ahead and fundamentally 30 seconds isn't much time. So I think this is going to be a procession for Black now. We are about to see the last rights of this game, but what about it has been, Matt? I would love to see this again. I'd love to see these two go at it. Maybe with Jordan with a little bit more time to prepare as well on the boxing, but they've really treated us to some top quality chess boxing this evening. And I think they've been magnanimous toward each other. I think we're gonna see them embrace each other. Um, 
as David wins, either by checkmate or, as you kind of hint at, probably by Jordan's time finally running out here. They both take their seats at the border as the last, almost certainly last round is about to start. A good handshake there. You get love to see the sportsmanship. And we're back. Okay, okay, we're back. Jordan playing white, a late replacement, absolutely heroic effort so far, has 24 seconds left on the clock. He has no time at all, 23 seconds, and with nearly four minutes left, it's just a question of does he lose on the board or does he lose on time, which is ticking down inexorably and horribly. 18 seconds left, and he's taken a pawn, Black has taken a pawn. 16 seconds, 15 seconds, Jordan is in a world of pain, a world of play. He's going to play Knight takes G2 next and then move it. Six seconds, five seconds. David knows he's raising his arm and I think that's it. I think it's over. And it's a win on time for the Northern Powerhouse. But Jordan, a late replacement, a late replacement has equipped himself magnificently. What a fight! And you love to see them embrace each other like this at the end, in mutual respect. Back to Gemma. But we have a winner on the chess due to time. It's our Northern powerhouse, David Germany! But please also, as the commentators mentioned, give a round of applause to Jordan, who stepped in late to replace the fighter who had to retire. What a